And I was like, I don't want to deal with Section 8. I've heard the horror stories and uh, I don't want to deal with it. So I didn't know a whole lot about it, but I'm learning a whole lot more now that is nowhere as near as bad as people think it is. Uh, I'm curious now to, to tell everybody, like, you've now got it fixed up, or maybe you're almost fixed up. How did you find a tenant? Like, well, this is going to be a rental property for for you. So tell me about that process and, and what ultimately happened. So this was probably the easiest part of my process. And though it's yet to see, like, its full, like, story, like, the story's still been written a little bit, finding a tenant for me was easy. I was looking for a property manager on Facebook. I actually came across a young lady who had the same vision that I do for the city. She's from the city. We, we went to the same high school together just at different times. And she wants the same thing for the community that I do. And I reached out to her via Facebook and she had a tenant already that she couldn't place that was looking for a place. So it just kind of fell, the tenants fell right in my hands. What I didn't know is that I would be finishing this project for a Section 8 tenant. I didn't know that. However, I met them uh, when I came home and it was still in construction mode. And immediately when they walked into the property, their eyes was like, oh my God. The property manager was like, you would never know this house looked like this on the inside versus what the outside looked like and the street itself. You would never know that. They looked around. They, I could see the light bulbs in their head as they were looking around thinking, okay, I can put this here. I can put this here. This is going to great here. This is going to be such and such as room. I can see those things going off in their head without them even talking because I feel the same way when I go into a property that I like. So it was amazing. So immediately we filled out the section eight paperwork and it took off from there. They, they could see home. You could, you could tell they, they, they were placing themselves there. They were pla yes. placing the furniture. Yep. So finding a tenant was, was the least of my worries, the least mm -hmm. of my concern because I had a, a tenant just kind of fell in my lap and that mm -hmm. doesn't happen very often. No, no, <laughs> no. Interesting. And so did, did you have any thoughts one way or the other about section eight, the program or the, how it worked or, you know, did any one way or the other, I mean, is that something you knew about before you got, found this tenant through your property manager? You know, I was not even thinking Section 8, even though I had one of the contractors who've done a lot of work to prepare for a Section 8 home inspection um, tell me um, the price range I could get for this property um, rent-wise. And I was like, I don't want to deal with Section 8. I've heard the horror stories and uh, I don't want to deal with it. So I didn't know a whole lot about it but I'm learning a whole lot more now that is nowhere as near as bad as people think it is. Yep. It really isn't. Yeah. And I, I've heard the same thing. You know, I, I personally am in a different niche. I'm in the college student rental niche, but you know, you, you talk to people and the same thing you just said, you hear, Oh man, there's all these inspections and there's kind of red tape and, you know, and sometimes you'll either, you know, somebody's going to tear the property up. Well, there's a lot of myths out there about what, what, what really happens when in truth, a lot of people I've talked to who are section eight tenant rental uh, landlords will say, Hey, I, you know, I get my rent from the government every single month, plus whatever portion the tenant pays. That's really nice. You know, the, the, the rent is guaranteed at least part of it by the government and the red tape you know, is not as big a deal. Yes, there's an inspection. I want to hear more about the inspection and you know how that went, but uh, in the end, you, there's, typically those are things you want to fix anyway. So unless you're, you, unless you're trying to run the property down and not ever fix anything, which is not what you're trying to do, not what I'm trying to do, that most of the things you fix are not that big a deal anyway. And you get a tenant who will often stay for a long time because they got a good deal. Like, look at this home you just prepared for them. You fixed it up, you made it nice. And 
why would they go anywhere, right? I mean, they, they, this is it's hard to find a good a good house for, uh, that where landlords want to take care of their property. I have found. Have you found the same thing? Have you were they happy to find somebody who would take care of the house like you obviously did? Well, I think they had this tenant had been looking for houses for a while, and the property manager was like, "You're not gonna find anything else in this area like this, mm-hmm. so you may want to jump on this." Yeah. <laughs> They knew the property manager knew they'd seen it. They knew. Oh, that's good. That's so she did the selling for you, or they told them what they got. It was so easy for me. Yeah. That part was so easy. <laughs> now, are they managing it for you, Yolanda? Are they the ones who are gonna collect the rent every month, or do you did you just pay a leasing fee to them and then you handle it from here? So the situation is a little different. Normally, I would she would be collecting the rent and just taking her fees and giving me my cut but this time it's reversed i'm going to collect the rent i'm going to give her her cut Got it. But, so any properties from here on out we would do that because i, I want to continue doing business with her um so we'll do that next property for but for this one i said you know what let's reverse it i'll pay you your fee once a month and i'll collect the rent and we're good Okay, good. You've got so we it. actually have a written a contract. I actually have a written contract with my property manager about how fees are going to be sent, when they're going to be sent, and the things that I need her to do, which is basically the things that she does for her own properties. Right. And so she'll. So if, if your tenant has a maintenance issue, I mean, you're in Florida, that's in Mississippi, she would be the one to take the call on that and call a, call a local maintenance person or, or handle it for you? Yes. Perfect. Okay, good. Uh, now that you have it rented, what what is the what are the numbers on your rent? Like, well, how, how much rent do you have coming in every month? Six fifty five for this rental. That is the amount that I um, agreed to with Section Eight. So with Section Eight, it's a little it's different how the rent is is set. It's based off of the tenant's income um, as well as your property side whether it's a three two a two one such and such um however just because this tenant is 655 doesn't mean that my next tenant won't be higher and i was told that and i'm going to look into this because you got to verify trust but verify (laughs) um that i can raise the rent every year just like any other landlord got it so if the market rent goes from 655 to 675 or something, you're not stuck necessarily with the same same amount for 10 years or something. There are properties in that city that are collecting close to $1,000, if not more, off of Section 8. I hope you enjoyed that interview with Yolanda. I feel very fortunate to be able to have so many conversations with people who are at various levels of their real estate investing career. And just to peek behind the scenes of what it takes to buy it, to fix it up, to, to go and figure out just all the the many pieces that like a puzzle you have to put together for that first deal. So thank you, Yolanda, for sharing with us and for your time. Uh, If you enjoyed this episode or if you enjoyed the the show in general, there are a few different ways you can support the show and to keep it going in the future. The first is to hit that subscribe button, whether it's on YouTube um, or on your podcast player. When you hit subscribe, it lets you know of any future episodes that come out in the future. Thank you so much again for spending some time with me today. Until next time, I'm Chad Carson. You can also call me coach. And the Real Estate and Financial Independence podcast is all about investing in real estate, achieving financial independence, and doing more of what matters. See you next time.